All right, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Camping Corner. This is episode five. five. You betcha. Hey guys, I'm Tony. I'm Mallory. And we're gonna have some fun today. Yeah. So our first segment, as we start off every show, we're gonna start off with Around the Web. So this week on Around the Web, we have these little featured, I guess, campers for dogs. And these are so stinking cute. Although I would need a bigger one because I've got a great dang. So I just need an actual camper. Like, like just a tiny house. <laughs> yeah, you just right? need a tiny house altogether. But these are adorable. Absolutely. They're super cute. The dog peeking out from inside. Uh, I don't know who makes those, but they're super, super cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've got anything like that, guys, make sure you send in the pictures to us. You know, let us see that kind of stuff. Yeah. I saw this week and I'm sure everybody else has the, the picture of, I just want to go camping and smell like a campfire. Mm -hmm. You know, what a great smell. We get so used to smelling that in the summertime and, and what a great smell. It is. And so we had Jamie Frankert reply, so tired of seeing this. Can't wait to see sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Is there a coach covered in snow? I don't blame you one bit, Jamie. Every time I look out my kitchen window and see ours covered in snow, it's depressing. Hey, you know what today is? What's today? Today's Friday. It's Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. Oh, guys. So we're going to do something special today. Yeah. We're going to talk about... Love of camping. The love of camping. Yeah. The, the love languages of camping. Do you know what your love language is? My, my wife keeps telling me to read it, and I don't. And <laughs> my love language is my wife keeps telling me to read my love languages, and I don't do it. <laughs> Mine is quality time. That's probably a pretty good one. So the five love languages of camping are, number one. Quality time. Let's let, go camping together. You betcha. Number Words two. of affirmation. You make the best s'mores. <laughs> and number three, gifts. I bought you a new RV. I don't know. I might like that one. That's a dangerous one. That is a dangerous that, one. That's dangerous. <laughs> Acts of service. I set up the tent for you. <laughs> I, we've got a camper, but I set up the tent for you. Is that <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Physical touch. Let's zip the sleeping bags together and snuggle. You know, they make two person uh, sleeping bags. I know. I don't know that I could do that, though. That's kind of that's kind of close. It's really tight, but I don't know. People like to snuggle. They also make two-person hammocks and obviously porch swings and all that other stuff for mm -hmm. the campground. So lots of cool things that get you close together. So, you know, <laughs> tell us what your love languages are or your loves of camping. Yeah. So then next from another full-time RVer, we have Jess and Rachel. They're a married couple from Boston, Massachusetts, and in 2018, they renovated a 2002 Keystone Cougar fifth wheel and moved out of their apartment to hit the road full time. They renovated a Cougar. A Cougar. And they parked a car. <laughs> Did you park the car? Okay. I hope they, I, hopefully they don't send us a bad review. <laughs> <laughs> I love that TV commercial, though, about parking a car. Have you seen that? No. I think it's a Hyundai commercial. I parked a car. Did you park the car to God? <laughs> oh, Tony. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh, what's the buzz? All right. <laughs> so in honor of Valentine's Day, we wanted to talk about camping and romance still. So couples coaches. We've got a lot of these. We do. The Passport 2500 RK mm -hmm. Rear Kitchen. Yep. I love where the entry is on this unit. It right next to the kitchen, super close to the refrigerator. Easy to get in, easy to get out. Grab an ice cold beer. Yep. Whatever, iced tea or whatever you're drinking. Yeah. Even has a little desk in it. It's a really cute coach. So we've got a lot of couples coaches, not just the Passport. We've got one from Puma. Um, I think it's the 22 SKC, is that right? Yes. The front kitchen? It's yep. adorable. That's the one I probably. So another thing is with millennials coming into the market or even 
you know, people that their kids are grown, they're out of the house, um, that are camping in more couples coaches. We see that more and more every day, people that are trading in those bunk houses for something that accommodates just the two of them. Empty nesters? Yeah. People yeah. that are, the kids are gone? <laughs> they're the happiest we've ever you seen You bet them. you. They run around with those little <laughs> popper thing, <laughs> confetti <laughs> constantly. Kids are gone. <laughs> so we also filmed another couple coach. So check that out now. Hey guys, love's in the air. And this is another highlight for a couple's coach. This one is a Cougar 302 RLS fifth wheel. So I want to give you a tour. So starting out in the kitchen, you'll notice this cool uh, little island. It does have a stainless steel double sink. Got your spray faucet there. Lots of storage space. Right across from there you have your oven, glass fold back top, three burner stove, your microwave. Storage above there. It's a pretty cool window. Get taking the views. Back over here you have a double refrigerator. So not just single, but double. So check out all of this space that you have for all your food. So if you're taking a long journey, maybe traveling for the summer, perfect for that. An area for a coffee bar. So check out all of this countertop space. Backsplash. All this um, storage up here, plenty of room. Over here you have your freestanding dinette set. Back here you have your entertainment system. So you have flat screen TV, electric fireplace for those cool months. Storage space above your couch there, two nightstands. Get your Thomas Paine theater seating. Storage above there. All right, let's take a look at the bathroom. This does pass through to the, the bedroom. So let's start out here. So you have your toilet in the corner, the corner stand up shower. I love the marble look that it has. You got a skylight there. Have your sink. And then you have your medicine cabinet there and check out all of this space for your clothing. So it's mirrored, has drawers, and then you have your bedroom. So you have your, you get more storage next to the bed. So check that out. A nice window, taking the view, the stars at night. You hang out your TV right here. This does slide shut this door right here. So you get some privacy. You have another door as well that shuts. So guys, if you're looking for a smaller fifth wheel for, you know, ideal for two people, or maybe if you have a small family, this one would be worth checking out. So have a great day. So we were posed the question about romantic camping destinations. Mm -hmm. I think anytime you're outside, that's a pretty romantic place if you're with the right people or the right person or right situation. Right. But we have combined a list. Our crackpot staff has put together a list of the nine most romantic camping destinations. If you don't agree with this list, send us your choices of what you think is the most romantic. Yeah. So Napa Valley is one of them camping there, you know, wine country in California. That could be pretty, that'd be pretty nice for me. Grass Valley, California, mm -hmm. a place called the Oasis Campground. Mm -hmm. Ooh, or a romantic weekend camping with wild horses in Maryland. Um, I have no idea how you say the name of that. When it... Give it a shot. Yeah, no. <laughs> Ossateague Island National Seashore Campground. I could have really messed that up. I, I thought about it. <laughs> you could stroll arm in arm uh, through Savannah's historic streets. Savannah, Georgia, supposed to be one of the most haunted places in America. Maybe that's romantic to some people. That is. I don't know. Got a, but it is beautiful there. Got a previous love that's haunting you in Savannah. <laughs> Boo! 
You've got the stunning white sands of New Mexico and Alamogordo, New Mexico. Oh, you tried that one? I but did not try the that other one, one. But, but not the other one. <laughs> that one's not going to be offensive if I mess it up. You can escape the mountains and visit the Switzerland of America. That's O'Ray, Colorado, Ridgeway State Park. Yep. And then Asheville, North Carolina, visit America's largest home and enjoy free wine tasting. I like how I'm getting all the, I like all the wine ones. I'm drunkard. I know, pretty much. You wino. <laughs> There's a great river that runs through Asheville, and you can do the lazy river thing, get on the inner tube and just flow through there. Isn't that the, Is built, that... the Biltmore Estate? Mm-hmm. Isn't that what's yep. there? Yep. It's pretty amazing. You can get lost in a world full of flowers. Visit uh, Buckeye Lake, Columbus East KOA in Columbus, Ohio. We know that's your favorite right there, flowers. I'm all about the flowers. He is, guys. Don't let him fool you. You bet you stick him in my hair. (laughs) Have a candlelit dinner in one of America's most romantic cities, Charleston, South Carolina. You can stay at the Charleston KOA. Charleston's awesome. You ever seen what they call Rainbow Row, all the... There's a, a thing of row houses, and they're all, each one is painted a different color. I've never seen that. It's absolutely beautiful. It's uh, I think at one point, I believe I read that at one point that was the most photographed section of houses in the country, and they were on postcards. Yeah. Um, but they're each one's a different color. It's called Rainbow Row. It's absolutely stunning. That'd be pretty cool. Beautiful, cool. beautiful. Uh, you can kick back in a tropical paradise and visit Long Key, Florida at the Fiesta Key RV Resort. Yeah. So lots of great ideas for romantic camping. And I know we've already talked about the two-person sleeping bags, the hammocks, and then you've got your love seat folding chair. So tons of ways for you guys to snuggle up with that significant other. Yeah, and if you have to take family with you, there's probably some cool things that you could do with your family in those areas too. So if you're not empty nesters or almost empty nesters or retirees or if you've got 12 kids and you still love to go camping, check out those places too. So Yeah. All right. So the next segment we've got is Ask an Expert. So today we asked Josh... Okay. And it was kind of funny because Josh was in his office and I just barged in. Not everybody wants to be on camera and get, get you know, bombarded with questions. So we just barged in, like right in the middle of what he was doing. <laughs> and we asked him a question that, that we had been asked, which has more reliability, a residential refrigerator or an RV refrigerator? Nice. So check out the video here, guys, with Ask an Expert with Josh, our service manager. All right, guys, we're going to ask an expert. You wanted to know what what has more reliability, an RV refrigerator or a residential refrigerator? So we're going to ask an expert. Here we go. Hey, Josh. Hey, you're live, by the way. Hello. So we've been posed a question with uh, our camping corner about uh, what reliability is better, RV refrigerator or a residential refrigerator? Great question. And the answer is not really a simple one because it's subjective. Okay. Okay. If you want to just put it down to what system's going to work better, um, my opinion, I would say an RV refrigerator is going to be more reliable because it has two different power sources, so to speak. In case one breaks, the other can work. It, It depends on how it breaks. But residential fridges are a completely different style of fridge. They're going to be a compressor-based one. So now we're not going to be relied on uh, the the same types of um, setups in order for it to work. Residential fridge doesn't have to have the same venting that that an RV fridge has to have in order to get the heat out. Residential fridge is only going to run on AC voltage. So there's less things to break on it if you want to look at it that way. Um, and it's, it's really, it's going to depend on the style of camping that the person's going to do. If you're going to be in a campground all the time with, with AC power, residential fridge is going to be faster. It's going to be, uh, more capacity typically, uh, than an RV fridge, although they're trying to catch up. Um, but if you're somebody that, that, that travels a lot and maybe has to kind of dry camp or, or go off their battery for a night or two, right. um, then an RV fridge is going to be your better choice because you can run on propane and use that 12 volt side, the DC voltage side, instead of the AC voltage. Residential fridges, 
and the units now are going to also require inverters to be able to run down the road. So you kind of have, uh, there, there, there's a lot of variables on both. <laughs> so I don't know that one's actually more reliable than the other one. Um, but there's certainly going to be advantages to either or. Probably the best answer is going to be when they come talk to you, hey, this is the kind of camping we do. And, I mean, if you're basing what camper you're looking on at versus which kind of refrigerator is in it, that's the question that you guys are going to uh, be able to answer for them on, okay, we like to go to state parks and, and we like to go, uh, we like to travel pretty far. We're going to spend the night in the parking lot and we want our fridge to stay running. That's going to help you determine, okay, we probably don't want to look at a residential fridge, but somebody says, you know what, we're going to be in a permanent spot in Florida all winter. And then we're going to drive back home and we're going to be in our permanent spot here in Indiana, like at Wall Ridge Campground. The residential fridge is going to be great for them, more capacity, and, and they're not worried about the, the alternative power sources. So Perfect. Clear as mud, probably. Clear as mud. Doesn't really <laughs> nope. answer it fully, but, uh, you know, both are going to be great nowadays. So it depends on uh, what kind of camping you want to do. There you go. Straight from the expert's mouth, guys. All right. So next up is Gadget Corner. And this week it is Gadget Corner, not Tech Monkey. You betcha. <laughs> Our beautiful hand model helps us once again. <laughs> Careful. He might take another job after that. All right. So this week is the x Chocks. Tire locking chocks. Yeah. Cool system, super easy to use, keeps the camper from moving around side or end to end, not side to side. Yeah. But keeps it from rocking around, rolling a little bit. Super easy to use, has a handle, little ratchet on it, locks it in place. Helps keep you stable when you need to be stable. Right, when all the kids are running around in the camper. You betcha. Minimum wage gets both sides of the table. <laughs> <laughs> industry news. There's a lot of industry news this week. So more and more manufacturers are coming out with more mid-bunk options, and we definitely are seeing a lot of this. We've seen tons of them. Mm -hmm. Used to be just in fifth wheels, and specifically a lot of your big fifth wheels. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing them in travel trailers. Absolutely. Bringing a new option in. Mm -hmm. When they first came out, one of the things I saw was, it was kind of grandma and grandpa's coach. Mm -hmm. So many times when you do a bunkhouse, that bunkhouse takes up so much of the rear camping space. And that's great if you've got kids mm -hmm. full time all the time. Right. But the mid-bunk floor plan still gives you that big rear living room mm -hmm. and puts your bunk beds in the side. Yeah. Yeah, and it's good. You know, we've had people that, like you said, they're empty nesters, but they may go to races and stuff, and their buddies may go with them. It's just an extra place for them to stay. Or when you don't really want to be in the rear living space with your spouse, you can go in there and chill. Yeah. A lot of them have a sofa with mm -hmm. a bunk in there. Yep. So you can put a second TV in there. That way, if you know you don't want to watch the same things yeah. that the uh, that your spouse wants to somebody wants to watch the nascar race somebody wants to watch something else <laughs> right you can do that that's right makes gives you options so check out the new floor plan of the hideout mm -hmm. on this video that we're going to show you now which is a mid bunk floor plan What's going on everybody? I'm here at the Boat Sport and Travel Show getting things set up for the show starting this Friday. Wanted to take you guys inside this Hideout 320 MBDS that we have here. Uh, very, very cool unit. You'll see why this is a mid-bunk unit. First off, huge kitchen. As you can see, a lot of countertops prep space, very cool colors, get your refrigerator, ginormous TV, fireplace. You guys know I love the fireplace. Take the chill out of those cool evenings. The beginning of the year camping or at the end of the year camping, not use your propane. You've got your nice couch over here, big windows back there, places to sit stuff on both sides of the couch, which is always great. Directly across from that TV entertainment system, you have your theater style seating, which is great. Booth dinette, which will turn into a bed. Again, I'll back up just so you can see the overall kitchen living room area. Now let's check out this awesome bunk. So like I said, it's a mid bunk. 
and it's not one or two, but three bunks, which is very, very cool. Lots and lots of room for the kiddos or friends. I mean, these will support 300 pounds a piece, so it's not out of the question to have adults in here as well. Coming back to the bathroom, got a nice size bathroom, shower with a seat. You do have storage below your sink as well as in your medicine cabinet there. And last, but certainly not least, would be the bedroom. Nice big bedroom. You do have that window at the front to let a lot of light in, but you do have the blackout shade, so you don't have to worry about that waking you up in the morning if you want to sleep in. His and hers closet on both sides, as well as drawers down below. And you have a closet over here on one side, as well as a TV backer, if you guys want to come back here in the bedroom, get some privacy and watch the TV. So very, very cool hideout. This is one of like 35 units that we have here at the show starting this Friday, so you have to come check it out. All right, guys, that is the end of another episode, episode five, which was our Valentine's special. Hopefully, love is in the air. We will see you guys next time. If you did anything fun for Valentine's Day that you're allowed to share, then share it with us. Especially if it was camping related, because yes. that'll make us really jealous, because it snowed yesterday, and it's really cold today. It's gross out. But yeah, we will see you guys next time, so thanks again. See you later.